Um, hi everyone, my name is Amulia. Today I'll be talking about responsive web design. The definition is a website that responds to the device that accesses it and delivers the appropriate output for it uses responsive design. Rather than designing multiple sites for different size devices, this approach designs one site but specifies how it should appear on varied devices. And I want to point out that A, this relates to screen size. So for example, accessing a site from um, a flip phone versus a smartphone versus a tablet versus desktop. And also, um, it relates to browser capabilities. So if we were to make the tagged website responsive, let's say, taking the existing tagged desktop site and rearranging the layout so that it would fit on, um, say, a flip phone, would not just make it responsive because half of flip phones or most flip phones don't have JavaScript. And right now, if you go to tag the desktop, tag.com, um, and turn off JavaScript, nothing happens. So responsive web design sh should also take into account browser capabilities. So what are the advantages of having responsive web design? You have one code base. So right now on Tagged, we have a mobile code base and a desktop code base. And we would eliminate a need for that if we had one site that rearranged the layout to fit any device that's accessing it. And it would also eliminate the need to build new features. Or sorry, build new features twice or three times if we have like a different Tableau website. Um, and it's a better experience for the user. So um, I know a lot of times when I'm trying to access a bunch of things at once, I leave Windows restored. And when I do that, it's kind of hard to access it if you have to scroll sideways as well as up and down. And finally, it's just cool. Um, now I'm going to talk about graceful degradation versus progressive enhancement and how that ties in. So most of you probably al already know this, but I'm just going to go over it really quickly. Uh, graceful degradation, uh, I'm not going to read that, you can read it. Uh, graceful degradation basically is you start off building your site for the latest browser out there, let's say, or basically what most people have or what's cutting edge. And for other not so up-to-date browsers, you put in a patch. So, oh, if they don't have this feature and the site isn't working properly for this browser, you come up with some sort of fix for that. And you sort of build for the best browser and work your way down and build fixes for the rest of them. Whereas progressive enhancement is where you start off with the very base. So you want to build something that will work on the basic browser. And then for browsers that have um, other features that, would, that you can use to enhance their experience on your site, you layer it up and you build something that would serve them better. But the point is, with progressive enhancement, you are guaranteeing that everybody that accesses your site will have access to the main content and will still get a very good experience from your site. And um, this ties in with responsive web design because, like I mentioned earlier, responsive web, um, it, res it should respond to your browser capabilities um, as well as the screen size. So you could have responsive web design with graceful degradation, but it, see it makes sense to start off with progressive enhancement so that you build something that works on everything on all devices. Um, so you know it adjusts your screen size and whatever your um, browser can handle, and then it goes from there. Um, and as I mentioned, the tagged website, it wouldn't be responsive if we took the desktop site and then adjusted the layout to shrink it so that it would work on a mobile device because it doesn't work without JavaScript. So now I'm going to go over how, how to actually respond to the screen size. This is a very basic example. So you see that for different tiers, right now I'm just doing something very simple where it adjusts to the, um, where it adjusts the background color. So for something this small, oops, it would say yellow. And then for something a little bit bigger, it goes red. Bigger than that goes green. And really big, it goes blue. Basically, we have JavaScript that goes in and it detects the screen size. So every time um, the window is resized, we check the width. And it's pretty simple. So if it goes in, and if the width is less than 480, for example, for in the first one, 
um, for div where the class is content, it sets the background to um, FFO, which is yellow, I believe, the smallest one. So it's very straightforward. Um, yeah, even if you don't really read code, it should be pretty simple because it just goes by the screen size and according to that, it does what you want. So of course it gets more complicated when you want to try and include templates and arrange the layout accordingly, but the basic concept of how to do it is actually very simple. Okay, so now I'm going to talk about how to adjust the layout according to the screen size. So if you go to the desktop site, so you'll see that nothing happens. It doesn't really adjust, it just adds a side scroller. So what we have here is responsive. So this is the same as what we saw here where we have the settings over here, the meet me play thing over here, um, and the user information over here. Except the CSS is kind of messed up, but um, we can ignore that for now. Um, and as you resize it, notice two things. So one, the user information went under the play tab, and the other thing is it created this button which wasn't there before, or it showed that button, and that leads to the settings. So the way this works is you have your column one, which includes the settings, column two, which is basically the play tab, and column three, which includes Meet Me Preload. So this is just the HTML markup. And so basically, we have column two and three, which align up because that's how we want it when they're um, one is under the other. So you have the play tab and then the settings right under it. And you set column three to be the thing on at the bottom with height 20%, or you can do it however, but right now it's set with 20%. And column one is display none, and this is for feature phones. And so if your screen goes bigger than that, so if you're on large screens, um, so you do a media query with min width of 960 pixels. So if it's larger than that, then we get this column one to the left, column two in the center, and and then column three is going to line up next to column two. That's basically how that works. It's pretty straightforward. It's just in terms of the CSS. Um, you do media queries and you specify how you want each thing to be displayed according to the screen size that you have. So as you, like we don't have multiple pages. So play.jst that I showed you earlier. So this one is just constant. You just have column one, column two, and column three. And it's all dependent on the CSS as to how you rearrange it. So you can see how this is this can be much more advantageous than having two different sites just to deal with a layout. Oh, so um, the reason that I started off with the color example was because that was depending on JS. And the stuff that we have now, if you've seen, um, it's, it's included with PHP. So that part where it said column one, template, include. So it just sort of, or with JST, it just sort of includes it statically. Um, so ideally, what we would have is we would have a static page for the main content to deal with devices that don't uh, that don't support JavaScript. And then for the extra modules, so as your screen gets bigger, the other um, the settings modules and the user module or the user info module those would be loaded in with JavaScript. And say we're on a feature phone that doesn't support JavaScript. Because the main play module is included statically, they would get that experience. And as your screen got bigger, which in if you're using a feature phone that doesn't support JavaScript, your screen wouldn't be getting bigger. But if you're using something else where your screen is getting bigger, then you can load that because you know that screens of larger size typically have JavaScript. So by defining a main content that's static and is supported by everything and then loading all of the extra stuff, the uh, other modules with JavaScript, you essentially you're, you're satisfying everyone and giving all devices a good experience. So that's a key concept when w for uh, responsive web design. And another note is that everything is in percent. Um, I thought this would be pretty obvious, but um, if you look at the tagged desktop website, everything is in pixels. So I just wanted to point that out. Um, so within the tiers, you have you specify how the layout is, and then 
with or sorry between the tiers you specify the different layouts and then within those tiers um, if you adjust the screen size it should still respond accordingly um, and it does that just through percent so to conclude um, I want to say that if tagged was was to go responsive uh, this would be the time because we're building new tagged and also um, you know redoing a lot of code making everything awesome and another note is that if we did go responsive we would be the first social network to do so so that's something to think about if you look at Facebook they do have a basic website that works even if you don't have JavaScript so they are trying to target you know all devices and everything like because if you go on tagged without JavaScript nothing works so other websites other social networks even they do support that they try to kind of accommodate everyone but this is just really cutting-edge technology and it just it's very new I think that's the main reason that other websites haven't done it if you look at um I think it was Boston Globe they did th there's only a vi there's a few websites that have done this already and it's gotten them a lot of attention so Boston Globe did that uh, just pretty recently and they were in the media a lot for that Oh, um, so the question was, would code load be a problem? Because if you're on a really um, small flip phone, uh, would you be loading all of the extra templates unnecessarily? And um, so that's what I was saying about the, um, the static loading. So you only, so if you're on a flip phone that doesn't support JS, or even if it does, if according to that screen size, you're only going to load what's shown there. So as you extend the screen size, if you have JavaScript, then it will use JavaScript to load those other modules. And even with like CSS, the CSS will be included in those other modules. So you're not going to be loading anything unless you do the whole page as static. You're not really going to be loading anything that you don't need. So I don't think code load would be a problem. So the question was, what are the difficult parts of doing this? And um, so I think the concept is actually really straightforward. Um, when we were doing this for um, the prototype, the difficult parts that we encountered were I'm not sure if this is relevant, but the main thing that we were struggling with was getting everything to JST because um, on mobile, we're doing everything with just an HTML controller and a PHP Savant file. Um, so we, ha we had to switch that over so that we could, um, we could work with JavaScript as well. I think if you have a lot of modules, like the more stuff that you deal with, like it just, in terms of the CSS, it's still pretty simple because um, like you're just including what you need according to that size, but I don't know, I guess it gets cluttered if you have like a lot of different cases to deal with and just um, more features. If you have um, browsers that are, that you want to target something really specific, like this browser supports this feature, so let's take advantage of it, so let's, you know, do this particular thing for this particular case. You might end up with a bit like too many of those, but that's where I think progressive enhancement comes into play because then you can just build something very basic and then keep layering up on top of it. So it'll never seem like there's too much to deal with. Well, when we have the media queries, what we'll within the tiers that we have in the CSS, so um, you know the ones that I showed you, min size, whatever, and like when it's targeted towards mobile phone versus tablet versus desktop, with other than just including the modules according to the size, you can also specify CSS within those media queries. So I don't think it's that big a problem. I mean, um, so one thing that I, I want to mention is, so when we were doing, uh, when I was showing the prototype, we had the settings module being really out of whack for the CSS, but that's um, jQuery mobile uh, making everything bigger when the screen size is bigger. So, I mean, there are those odd little things that do come up, so that's something to think about. But in ter like, if we were to go in and... Um, specify the CSS ourselves and not have jQuery mobile override that for like we could deal with that kind of stuff it's not it's not a wall basically like I mean in terms of difficulties this is one of one example of something that might occur but it's not very hard to deal with overall I wouldn't say it's all that difficult but um, so if, if it's if it's the same content or even if it's not you can always hide stuff I guess like t to avoid hacks um, we might kind of run into somewhat of a difficulty but it's not really that hard because as I showed you in the CSS you're essentially just everything stays the same and then you're essentially just specifying how it's supposed to look which is all CSS so it's not very difficult at all
Like, I mean, over here, if you look at this um, resizing, it doesn't look, I don't know, I, I guess as impressive just because it's not all that different. We're just moving stuff over. Now, all of this is doing is specifying where those elements go. But within those CSS tiers, we can also specify, say, OK, so to use a really basic example, we can specify that as soon as um, you know, as soon as those modules disappear, we want, um, say, the background color to change. Or for something more complicated, we want the style of this to be a different font. Or like whatever we want. It's all just CSS. So I think it's actually much easier to do it this way than have um, different sites doing different things, right? So bef before, we have the flexibility of doing something completely different on mobile and something dif completely different on desktop. Whereas now, we have to kind of have the same content on both. With the two different sites, we do have more flexibility on what we can include. But having a united site or a collaborated site, it makes, it does eliminate a lot of code. And the only thing that you'd have to change is CSS, so how it's displayed. And it doesn't, it's not really all that difficult to do. So you just have a bunch of tiers and specify what goes on according to um, each of those tiers. It's, it's really straightforward. All right, thank you.